call me to order. Item B, verification of public notice and approval agenda, which is amendment to item F1 to table this presentation to the April board meeting. Yes. Second. Motion by Adam, second by Jeanette. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> item C, moment of silence to reflect on the business at hand. Item D, Watoma Area School District Strategic Plan. Mission statement, building positive foundations for the success of our children. Strategic directions, business and community involvement through internship, job shadowing, and mentorship. District marketing of the district and community through branding. Improve work and people skills. Develop parental contacts, promoting school involvement. Build relationships and mentor field to increase the Opening the lines of communication to support students with mental health issues. Item E, recognition of persons wishing to address the board. None? Um, going to administrative reports. Uh, I, uh, Tom, anything to add to your report? Yeah, just a few things. One, I uh, want to introduce Chris Brown. Chris is a uh, Fox Valley uh, Technical um, Watoma Regional Center West Campus. Um, uh, director, and so uh, Chris is going to be presenting with Jennifer tonight. She's also our landlord, so I have to make sure I do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, just so you know, uh, and I didn't have time to do this in my board report because we just got the phone call that uh, C.G. Schmidt and Plunkett Ray shall be doing our first walk around um, tomorrow um, at 10 a.m. at Riverview. Um, C.G. Schmidt will probably be more with Wayne Craig and Jeff Miller, and then Plunkett Ray shall be with um, Jewel and myself, and so they'll just sort of get a lay of the land, uh, get a copy of some plans, and so the, the very first um, uh, meeting and walk around um, is tomorrow. Oh, awesome. Thank you with that. And finally, um, I just wanted to take a moment tonight to um, recognize and thank uh, Deb Primo um, for her leadership um, and her commitment um, over the past 11 years at Parkside School. And I'm uh, glad she's staying with the district, but I feel like she needs to be recognized uh, for all the work and commitment that she's put forth over the last 11 years. So thank you, Deb. Nothing to add. Okay. Proceeds benefit future student council projects and the committee chairs Alyssa Szymanski. 
Kawachama High School staff appreciation event will be held in April in collaboration with Geek Club. We are planning a meal and a keepsake item, likely sounds with Lucky sounds from WHS manufacturing class, which is Ms. Wheaton's classes. Um, committee chair is Mike Kelly. 2022 homecoming thing focused on developing our own playlist in instead of hiring a DJ and the resurrection of hallway, de hallway decorating in addition to float building. The committee will research potential copyright restrictions and seek administrative approval for this change to the status quo. And with a final vote coming in March, Madeline White, Bailey Lego, and Cindy Dunham developed a proposal to resurrect hallway decorating with changes that make that make it more inclusive for all students. A poll last fall indicated one barrier to par one barrier to participation is the timing, especially for students who work or are in sports after school. The overall theme and Joseph Days will be are to be determined in May and April by all student council members, co-chair for Abby Kinnaman and Megan Kelly. A new committee was formed to research and design student council shirts. Our co-chairs are Abby Kapoliko and Natasha Ushman. And then projects for the 2022 to 2022, 2023 school year will be determined in May. Perfect. Jen, when it comes to like the, the um, homecoming and stuff, years ago we used to be able to decorate like Sunday night and so the Arabic could be, I mean, was that changed because of just the advisors, or is that? Yeah, much. I mean, it just said that opportunity for every equally yeah. new state, but if we can get advisors, we could possibly open that up as well. Yeah, that, that is an issue with athletes. Yeah. They just don't get to participate, and you know, and then Wednesday night's taken away, and I understand that, but mm -hmm. we need more to be all you know, involved. I'm glad you guys are thinking about that. Thank you. Um, board members. Um, I would like to present to Mr. Ross Peterson a member of recognition and certificate and his pen for award level two um, for being on the school board. Motion by Ross, second by Brian. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 2B, employment. I would entertain a motion to take item B1 through 10. So moved. I'll second that. Motion by Adam, second by Jeanette. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 11, information only, anything to add to that, Tom, as far as the state nope. transfer? Nope, steps uh, move um, to... I don't know if we're going to allow it, though. <laughs> we'll keep her. We'll keep her for sure. We like, the, we like our kids. <laughs> <laughs> we really want your children to take you, too. We like them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Item I, action items. Item 1, business and finance. Item A, approve the February 2022 treasurer's report. Make a motion to approve it as printed. I'll Sorry. second it. Uh, motion by Karen, second by Adam. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item B, approve the vouchers and payroll. I approve the vouchers and payroll as printed. Second. Motion by Karen, second by Brian. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Item C, approve the district HVAC replacement project. Um, with the, the advent of uh, ESSER funds and the ability to move funds around between general fund and ESSER, um, I asked Wayne Craig to identify um, any of the units that um, we spend the most money on for maintenance and the, you know, the ones that we have the biggest concern um, them potentially breaking down. So he was able to identify three units that were um, installed in 1996 and seven units that were installed in 2001. Um, nine of those units are at the high school, one of those units is at Riverview. And so with the 
uh, Gartman, who does our maintenance, uh, put in a bid for those units. They will completely replace the units. We need about an 18-week um, uh, window to get the, we're hoping to get the units uh, so they can have the crane here and put them up. And then we'll also have EC and D there and May Electric um, all prepared to do it. Um, but now is a good time to make that move and get those units placed. And so we're spending less money in maintenance on those units. And the efficiencies must be substantial given the 25 year old yeah. units. And in fact, uh, the Freon, um, we can't even, you can't, it's, it's recycled Freon if you need it for those units and it's expensive. Uh, this will have the energy um, conscious Freon. Yeah. Move to approve. I'll second it. Motion by Adam, second by Jeanette. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Opposed? Motion carries. Item D, approve the uh, fiscal year 2022-2023 CESA 5 contract for services. So each year we uh, approve our contract for CESA 5 for services for our students. Um, so the, obviously there's usually an increase uh, because of the salary benefits, um, or we are receiving more services based on the needs of our students. So I'd recommend the board approve the CESA 5 contract for 22-23. I'll make a motion to accept that. Second. Uh, motion by Karen, second by Adam. Any further discussion? Just do you know what the percentage increase was you know, over here? Just shy of five. Just shy of five? Yeah, so. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item E, approve the school year 2022-2023 wage increases and scales. I recommend the board approve the 22-23 wage increases and scales as presented. Take a motion to approve. I'll second. Who was the first one? Brian? Motion by Brian, second by Jeanette. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 2A is information only. A new Fox Valley Technical College offerings. So this is the reason Chris came tonight, so I'm just going to introduce her and she's going to go through um, what we're proposing. So about a month ago we sat down um, with the counselors, CD9 and Chris, and went over some ideas for some courses. Um, they already have obviously a lot in place, but one of them continued to be um, concerned about technology and kids wanting hands-on things, um, and just the trades in general. So oddly enough, she already come up with some ideas um, for that. We already have it on the course listing for our students, so they're already able to sign up for this course. Um, so we're hopefully to get numbers pretty soon here. But she's just going to share with you some of those things, and specifically our, our new intro to trade, trade class that we hope to um, have set for next year. So I um, just had to tell you, I get very passionate about education. So I wrote a script in order to be respectful for time and I'm sticking to it. All right. All right. <laughs> so my name is Chris Brown. I'm the manager at Fox Valley Technical College at Homer Regional Center. I've been with the college since 1990. And most of my career uh, with the college was at the Oshkosh Riverside campus. But in 2018, I was given the opportunity, or should I say the privilege, um, to serve the Walsh Homer campus. And uh, with the construction of the new building, we're able to offer more programs. So I wanted to thank the Watoma Area School District Administration, and I want to thank the board because um, we have such a great partnership, positive relationship, and with the vision um, to do, and you guys have the vision to do what's best for your students and the community. So thank you for giving students a jump start on full secondary education. And I'm very excited to share what we have in the works. So, working with Jennifer, Doug, Jenna, Joanne, we've come up with a plan to offer trades type of classes uh, for high school students. We know that there's a need in our area, actually a desperate need for these type of careers. And we want to give students the opportunity to try them out. So one challenge is finding an instructor to teach a class five days a week. Um, in order to meet a typical high school schedule. So I approached Jennifer with the idea to um, offer a certain class, like two afternoons a week, and then another trades class, like for the remainder of um, other days of the week. And when I say days of the week, I mean the afternoons. They generally do core classes in the morning, and so their afternoon is a little bit more flexible. So here's what we established thus far. So for fall of 2022, we've established a three credit type trades course. It's introduction to the pipe trades careers. 
In this course, students are going to explore occupations and career opportunities related to the pipe trades, visit real-life construction locations, observe projects in progress, and meet trades professionals on the job. Learn pipe trades terminology and how to interpret those specific um, trades and directions. Complete hands-on projects using hand tools, power tools, and pipe calculations. The instructor is Ben Verspagan. He contacted me to see if there would be any interest in Wontoma. He then attended the successful high school career day on February 16th. He had the opportunity to present to all the students. And uh, this course is scheduled to run on Mondays and Tuesdays from 12.30 to 3 in the afternoon. So also for fall, this one, I think you're going to recognize his name. So it's a layout and sawing operations class. It is a two credit class. It will be offered on Wednesday and Thursday afternoons, and it will be taught by Jeff Kozabuski from 12.30 to 2.30. This course will be held at the high school in the Wood Technology Lab, and the students will be exploring basic layout and measurement practices using both English and metric units. They're going to explore um, exposure to woodworking machines designed for sawing and strong emphasis given to machining and specification. Develop safe and efficient machining habits associated with sawing wood. This, course, this particular course is required for both the residential construction program and the wood manufacturing program at Fox Valley Technical College. So students taking this course can apply it to either one of those programs if choosing this career pathway. Then in spring, um, the spring semester of 2023, the plan is to offer introductory, introductory residential wiring methods. This would be held two afternoons a week. This course includes residential wiring methods that include practical application, hands-on experience in implementing safety, tool usage, and the National Electrical Codes. It's a three-credit class. On the other afternoons, we plan to offer automation, offer an automation robotics type of course. There'll be more logistics involved with the equipment and robots needed for this course. And Jennifer, you can keep them posted on uh, as we firm that up. So four classes I described, whether a student chooses any of these as a career field or not, they will look, what they learn in these classes are a lifetime skill. So, and I want to mention, um, how am I doing on time? <laughs> All right. So I just want to mention two more things, and that is the class ACBL program that's happening at the Washington Regional Center. It starts next week. As you are aware, you have two of your high school seniors that are enrolled in this program. They've met all the requirements for high school graduation, uh, the requirement for enrollment into the truck driving program, and the program dates align with your fourth quarter. So upon successful completion, these two students will walk through high school commencement, having earned their high school diploma and a class A truck driving license, which will give them op employment opportunity in a career field that is so in need of drivers. So inspired by this, Westfield High School is interested as well, maybe for next year. They are bringing a group of high school students to observe for a couple of hours um, once our class starts. They'll be here at the end of the month. So what you guys are doing in Watoma is also reaching out to other districts. The word is out. Lastly, I want to mention the Medical Assistant Program, which will start at the Wachacoma Regional Center face-to-face -face this fall of 2022. And the first group of students will graduate in December of 2023. It'll be held weekdays in the afternoons. It'll be open to both adults and high school students. So both Fox Valley Technical College and the high school will work closely with these students who are interested and who would be a good fit for the program. Um, there's a big drive in the state to promote rural health care in our area. And through um, the data we've collected, the medical assistant program is really needed around here. It's a couple of really big grants that are happening and we're going to support student tuition and expenses. So with that, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sold, sold on that. Great, great ideas. To the first one. <laughs> My husband will be calling for somebody. To <laughs> we'll hire. That's great. It's perfect. Any other comments from anybody? Anybody on the board?
All right. Um, item 3A, uh, approve temporary increase in hours for two Parkside employees. So at Parkside School, we had some extra need this school year for um, additional assistance, support for some special education students. Um, we have two after school program staff members who are not up to 40 hours and they work really well with our kids in the after school program. So we felt like it was a perfect fit. So we had these kids who needed more attention. We had the staff members who were really good at providing that and their availability worked with what, what our availability was for our kids. Um, so we were requesting of the board to add two and a half to three hours. It may increase as student time increases. Um, we have been doing it for a little while and it has been extremely successful. So it's like, I tear up when I see one of the students walking with one of these staff members because it's, we have lots of success stories and that's the picture perfect success story. So. I would, I would be safe to say these are students who have been at, at risk of being expelled yes. from the school district. So it's, it's stopping that from occurring, it's building relationships, they're learning, and, uh, and so that's what these positions are doing. The hope is that it is temporary um, because we're seeing such success with these students. We don't see it being needed permanently over time. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Adam, second by Ross. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item B, <clears throat> approve the middle high school instructional coach job description, first and second consideration. Yeah, so the, we created a job description um, specifically for a coach after looking at the middle school and high school data together. We decided it would be a good idea to have um, instructional coach available to continue reviewing data, looking at what we need. Um, but then as you see, it, it also is written so that we can cover ELA, math, or pretty much any area that is needed. Um, and then it also um, is specific to uh, somebody providing any intervention to maybe a gifted student versus a student that's below level. So it kind of covers everything in that job description um, and our hope would be able to use that to hire for the next um, school year um, as our need in especially math um, is there. So our first priority would be for a math instructional coach for next year. Which is the next item, the next agenda item after the um, job description. <laughs> the middle school, high school, math, instructional coach. So I move to approve the job description. I'll second that. Motion by Adam, second by Karen. A for discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item C, approve the creation of a middle high school mathematics instructional coach position. Continuation of that, and again, it's sort of the impetus from the board of trying to, you know, look at how can we bolster um, our math instruction um, and, uh, and just access to our, for our students to quality math. So, looking for that person in that position. So, this could very well be a, an internal candidate or an external candidate. We don't know. We just going to approve the job and then post it. And yep. Okay. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve the creation of the mathematics instructional coach position. Second. Uh, motion by Ross, second by Jeanette. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item D, approve the school year 2022-2023 bus driver contracts. I recommend that the board approve 22-23 uh, bus driver contracts as presented. Move. Uh, so moved. Second. Motion by Adam, second by Brian. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item E, approve the school year 2022-2023 substitute bus driver contracts. Recommend the board approve the 22-23 substitute bus driver contracts as presented. So moved. Sorry. Motion by Ross, second by Brian. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item F, approve the school year 2022-2023 support staff letters of intent. Recommend the board approve the 22-23 support staff letters of intent as presented. So moved. Second. Motion by Adam, second by Jeanette. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 
Item four, policy. Item A, approve the revised and or new policies, second consideration that we went through last time. Recommend the board approve second consideration unless there's any questions or um, other items that need to be brought up. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Adam, second by Jeanette. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item J, uh, Board Governance. Item 1, Discussion Only, Policy 5330, Administration of Medication Emergency Care, which you have a handout that Tom gave us. Yeah, you have it in your packet, and I also provided you a handout. It's a key so efficient, but I forgot to put it in the packet. <laughs> um, so, rather than bring this to you for first consideration, uh, I wanted to bring it to you to give it to you and then maybe have some discussion and maybe you, there's some things you would want us to look at. Um, I went to Narcan training in August of last year at one of the fact suppers and um, we went, we heard some um, individuals who are recovering addicts uh, talk about um, their journey uh, to survival. And uh, for example, you know, the, the one young lady um, who looks like uh, any young lady in this room um, had overdosed three times, twice in one day, uh, had been provided Narcan um, to, to come out of the overdose, um, really de demystified what an addict is. You know, no one is born and wants to be addicted to drugs. Um, people become addicted for a variety of reasons. Um, Narcan is uh, an opioid antagonist. Um, so what it does is when you, uh, it's um, nasal spray, and you, um, if you feel like someone is having it, is overdosing, you provide the nasal spray, and it removes the opioids off the receptors of the brain, and they come right out of that overdose almost immediately. Sometimes it takes more, depending on what they're using. Um, these high dosages of fentanyl that we're hearing about um, sometimes requires more Narcan um, than just the, what you typically would have. Um, there's a lot of stigma around this, right? I mean, um, and so I guess where I'm going with this, and Kiri is going to also get up and speak, Kiri Krenczynski here tonight, um, is of housing Narcan in schools, all right? And literally having a box next to maybe the defibrillator uh, that has an alarm on it where we have Narcan products. Kiri is in charge of monitoring that, keeping it full. Um, some things I've heard from other schools about this of why they're so hesitant. Um, I, I, I brought it up with CISA 5 and people look at me like, if I had hair, it would have been on fire. Um, they, they said, no, our community will never let us have this. We'll never have this in our school because people will be breaking that box and stealing Narcan all the time and they're gonna be using it. Okay, well, first of all, Narcan is not a drug, all right? All it does is save lives. Um, second of all, it's readily available in our community. If you, if you were an addict and you went to the health department right now, they would give you Narcan to help keep you alive, all right? So it's not like it's a, this valuable um, um, item that people are robbing stores or trying to get. Um, I think there's also that feeling of, if we have Narcan, we're identifying that there's a problem. Okay, well I'm gonna tell you right now, there is a problem, all right, in, in our society, not just our community, there is a problem with drug addiction. And I guess where I come from on this, and again, I'm, I'm gonna allow care to speak a little more after I'm done, is I don't, I, I, I predicated my life on not, trying not to judge other people. And if we have something that can save someone's life, like, like the defibrillator can save someone's life, and if I can use Narcan, Maybe I have a former student that's there at graduation to watch somebody, and maybe they're overdosing, and I can give them Narcan to keep them alive. I'm going to do it, all right, because it's the right thing to do. And I really don't care what people in the community think about it. That's why I'm at with it right now. Now, that's easy for you to say, you're the board. You know, you're, you're, you have to look at this in a different perspective and understand that. That's my part. <laughs> Carrie, if you'd like to maybe speak a little bit on what maybe I missed and maybe make it more technical. Um, <laughs> in that Sorry. No, I, Tom did a great job. So um, I guess overall, just the opioid epidemic is just increasing. Um, with the COVID pandemic, they have seen an increase in it as well. And like Tom said, um, you know, we do have people in our community um, that, that have this addiction um, and it might be your next door neighbor. Um, so the use of Narcan um, is increasing and it is something that is easy and readily available that can be administered to save someone's life. Um, in our school district, we have AEDs that we have available, easily administered, can save a life. We have epinephrine, 
easily administered can save a life. And we have had to, in our school district, use that to save a life. Um, this is something that um, we feel very strongly and have throughout the years kind of got the talks in. Um, Tom went to the training. I actually became a trainer through the Wisconsin Department of Health Services, so I can train all of our staff members to administer. Um, we've looked at the policy. We've created a huge procedure um, in how we would do it, just like we have with our epi and with our cardiac emergency response to um, we would go through all of that during the training when we would have our yearly program with our staff members. Um, it is a very easy nasal spray. It takes two seconds to administer it. Um, you know, we would go through what to watch for. Um, it is also something that if you use it and they weren't experiencing overdose, it's not going to harm them. Okay. Um, so that's another thing to look at. We would also have straight across the board in any emergency situation, we're administering an emergency medication, we're calling 911. And that would support our school to make sure that, you know, the ambulance is coming and somebody is going to be there to support that staff member um, that may be administering that. Um, so we have policy we looked at, we have procedure, you know, that we have in place. Um, one of the things that we talked about that there was concern was, you know, having it. So we looked at what would we do to store it. Um, they actually have um, a case that you can buy that has an alarm. Um, I don't think it's something that people are just going to barrel into and steal because you can go to the pharmacy or the health department and you can get it. Um, you know, they want people to have it. They want people, people to learn how to give it. Um, so there is a storage cabinet that we can use that identifies what it is. It has an alarm that goes off. Um, and, you know, that's one of the things that we were thinking about doing um, to kind of uh, take away that scare of somebody just breaking in and stealing it, you know, too, because that alarm would go off. So um, we prepared all these things. We um, also, during my training, I would have... Um, a test that Wisconsin DPI approved um, to teach the Narcan, but also test it. So we would have the staff testing just on their regular medication policy every four years. Um, we would have them take the standard test, but we would review the process every single year if that's something that um, would be put into place by the board. So I asked Steve Valley from NOLA or board docs um, if he had a um, any Narcan language that other school districts are using, and he did. So this policy I have in front of you is, is our administration of medication and emergency care. So we added um, the opioid antagonist with glucagon, epinephrine um, as part of the administering medication in an emergency situation. So I wanted you to have it just to see it and express any concerns you have tonight or if there are people that you want me to talk to or um, or ask uh, or carry to talk to you um, before we would bring it back for first consideration in April. Um, uh, we would definitely do that. I think, I, you know, I, we all hope that certain things never happen in our life, but I think with the way fentanyl is being used in a variety of drugs now to cut those drugs, it's a matter of time. Um, I think if you just read the West Point situation that occurred um, down in Florida, um, it's a matter of time when something's going to occur where someone could potentially be overdosing um, or presenting an overdose. And I, again, I just don't want to be caught where we're not prepared for that and we can't, so we got to wait for an ambulance to come with Narcan. Um, and in the meantime, you know, someone could die. I would just like to piggyback Tom on that, that West Point thing. I mean, these are kids where they, they don't know that, that uh, took an opiate unknowingly, not that I've been known to use cocaine, but that yeah. you know, they, they had no intention of taking opiate. Uh, uh, overdoses aren't limited to addicts mm -hmm. by any stretch of the imagination. But that's, uh, that, that's just my comment. The, the question I would have is, is what is the, I guess one, if there's if it's not administered properly or the decision's not made properly in, in its administration, what is the liability of both the district and the, the person that's doing it? Yeah, and, and so, and we do have that written in. Um, really, the only um, liability is if you um, ignore. So someone's laying there overdosing, and sure. you don't call 911, and you don't make an effort 
You so you're sort of pleading indifference to someone. So that, 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 so that's criminal culpability. Yeah, that, that, like if you, if you, if whether you think the person's overdosing or not, and you try to, um, and you administer um, Narcan, there is no liability sure. um, to doing that. So, would it take that one step further? If if we bring this into the school, I don't have really any medical questions. It seems to be to be pretty simple. It really can't you can't do harm, right? Correct. Sure. But in, a, in the case, do we potentially open ourselves up to litigation to say it wasn't done soon enough? You guys had it. You guys should have done it sooner. And then my child died, and you decided to bring this into the school. I guess, can we get an opinion on that? Maybe it's in here. This is the first time I've seen this. Yeah, right, right. You know, where you say, well, why didn't you do it five minutes sooner? Sure. You know, my child died because of you, and now we're, there we are in litigation. Yeah. I'd like to have a lawyer tell us that. Yeah. Sure. And actually, yeah, and these just, and then, just so you're aware, so the board doc stuff is all from legal. Sure. Um, and so the lawyers work this over and then um, present this. So this this language comes the, the from... The lawyer that represents us? Well, the old, yeah, so the only uses all the lawyers, like in the state of Wisconsin. Okay. So they use Borden and Clark and Tony Reddy. Yeah, so I, they, I just think it's worth like a few hundred yeah. bucks to have yeah. yeah. some that represents us. us. Yeah. Right, put that in the letter to sure. us. Yep. And, yeah, I, and I think you're just to answer, and that's fine, we definitely can do that. Um, unless the act uh, or omission constitutes a high degree of negligence. So I think the omission is pretty much looking at it sure. and not so much the time occurring under a, you know, we didn't get to it be like using the AED and you didn't use it sooner. The same could apply to the EPI. Oh, yeah, 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 um, right now, the health department has it for free, oh. and they, they have a grant, um, you know, to try to get it out in the community more so too. The theft issue probably so, isn't. It's no. not like it has you can go down. to you can go to local pharmacies. They would, they would use it, to, it to combat a, an overdose. Yeah. I guess you know yeah. there, there should be outreach to the students too, just to tell them that if, if you take it, it does nothing for you. Right. It's the same as eating a bowl of cereal or whatever. You know, they, yeah. <laughs> They should understand that it's not a drug. Would you like me to contact Tony Rennie just to verify if you could follow me? I, I think it falls the guidelines to do with the EpiPen, though. I mean, if we don't yes. give that in time, we don't give the, the other thing in time. Yeah. I think it's all under the same umbrella with that. I mean, sure, we can tell, but it's the same thing. If we don't give the EpiPen in time, they can say, you know, the same thing. So, so, so these policies are always vetted by the members. Right. Um, every policy we get. Um, what, I, what I would want, because we're not taking this lightly at all, and this, that's why it's just information only. What I would want to have the community understand that we did some further research. Um, Tom, if you can reach out to the um, uh, the sheriff and also to the city um, policeman, just to let, get their perspective to reaffirm for us there is a drug problem. I mean, how how bad are the calls for them and so forth? So it's not like we're just saying, oh, let's just throw it in our schools. You know, how bad it is in the community and it's like that second and third voice to support, or what would they would say? Like, yeah, this this you know is something to be needed. I think the other thing, piggybacking off what you said, Tom, too, we have to remove the judgment about what's happening. It's about saving the life. The, the judgment, you can take care of it later on, but it's about saving the life. And I think that it would be negligence on us, as the policy also says, if we didn't do something to assist in that situation. And I just want to reiterate, I'm not just coming, but so like the last policies that we went through, um, those were all. Um, Created by by their legal team. Yeah, I, so I, 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 that I, is sort of a percent. So what? So what I asked you was, um, what um, uh, was we'll the opioid antagonist? That's the term they use. What policy do you have for that? So this is board box policy. Sure. So there is some backing for that with what we pay board box. I just, I just think when, when, when you say opiate and Narcan, it's 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 something that evokes a passionate response. When you say EpiPen, it's not. And, and, and things that evoke passion tend to be more litigious than things that do not eat as well. So I, I guess that, that, that was the only reason. It's that. probably a simple answer from Tony or another yeah. resource. Right. Yes, you're covered. Yeah. And, I, and it sounds to me like, I mean, between Gary and Tom, and you guys aren't on the fence on this at all. I mean, we would recommend it. Right. I, mean, that's I understand that. And I, and I think, you know, and I know we're not there, but I think I, I agree. And, and in, in my opinion, you know, the constituents in our district elect board members to take these kind of decisions. 
And if you guys think it's the right thing and the majority here is the right thing, you know, I think if we're, I, I would personally be leaning heavily toward doing it. And taking I agree. It, I agree. And, and I agree. And I agree. That I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I don't think it hurts to have a phone call to the lawyer. I don't think it's going to hurt okay. just to get the affirmation and the two outreaches. I think the more information we get back, the better. Yep, okay. I'll give Tony a call. I'll call Wally Zulicki and I'll call Paul Mott and just say, hey, here's what we're thinking. What do you guys think of that? You know, what are your thoughts on it? And just so I can bring that back next time. Sure. My other comment and thought was to me, it should be in all the schools. It, to me, it's not just a high school thing. That's right. not true because yeah. it's not just about the children, it's about there could be an adult walking in for a parent teacher conference. And mm -hmm. so, I think it's something that has to be in all the schools. I think it could be maybe more like maybe a we were thinking eight. down by the gym, um, in the middle school and high school, and then like in the offices by the AEDs and um, EpiPens and all, like all the buildings. Sure. Carrie, yeah. is there any, any money out there for those boxes like to, to help support? Um, I could ask Patty about that just because they're under the grant, so there there might be something okay. out there. I think they were like three hundred dollars a piece for the ones that had the alarms, you know. Um, so if you're thinking maybe two of those and then just have a regular box in the office, yep. you know. And and those I think all those uh, principals correct me if I'm wrong, but I think all those AEDs are on camera. So, I mean, if the alarm did go off or we didn't get full, we'd be able to see who, who did it. And, okay, so yeah, I'll call the sheriff, I'll call the chief of police, I'll call Tony, and I'll just verify all that. And then if anything needs to be changed, I'll make sure to change it on here, and I'll just report back and we'll bring it up for first consideration in April. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. Any other, anything, any other concerns or, or corrections? Item two, discussion only, legislative update. Barry's not here, but anything else from anybody else? Tom, from anything at the... Just a closed session and not really anything new, and uh, we move forward. Okay. Item K, board suggested future agenda items. The monthly meeting is on April 11th, 2022 at 6.15 p.m. in the Riverview Elementary School Gymnasium. If you have any items to add to the agenda, please let Tom know. Item L, adjourn to closed session. Under state statute 19.851C, considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. Discussion of the continued employment of support staff member. Roll call. Yes. 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 Adam Henry. Yes. Nicole Henry. Yes. Jeanette Tolan. Yes. Very nice. We will convene the closed session and we will come back. Um,